Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm owner and surgeon of Lazar Veterinary Surgery. Uh, I'm now going to talk about fracture repair in the dog and cat. Uh, we do see broken bones fairly commonly, bones from different locations. Uh, what I'm going to show right now as an example is repair of uh, the forelimb, so the, the front leg in a dog or cat. In particular, the bones are called the radius and the ulna, two bones that sit uh, right next to each other and they typically break together. Uh, I'm going to talk about a type of repair called plating, where we use a bone plate with multiple screws. These are stainless steel implants. And this is uh, the most common method that we use for uh, repairing fractures of the long bones. There are other techniques, um, and depending on the fracture, we may elect to do a different procedure. But again, this uh, technique is very commonly performed, not only on these bones, but uh, on a number of other bones throughout the body. I do want to thank Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to show their DIA app illustrations for the iPad. It's a great program that I think should hopefully get the point across. So let's get started. What we're looking at here is the radius, is the bone on top, and that's the ulna. I'm going to hit play and then I'll just pause this at certain steps along the way. So the bone plate is made out of stainless steel. Um, once we start the surgery, we need to conform the plate to the area of bone in which we're doing surgery. So the first step is to align the bone back into its proper position and then the plate is bent as necessary. We drill holes on either side and then screws uh, are used to lock the um, plate against the bone. The step right before the screw was uh, putting a device called the depth gauge. It's to measure the length of the screw. What the model here does not show is that there's a certain amount of soft tissue, muscle. Uh, we're not seeing the far side of the bone and in many cases not even along the sides, just the one section of bone where we're drilling. And so in order to determine the depth, uh, we place this device that will tell us uh, the length of the screw. Now the plates come in different sizes and it's dependent on where the break is along the bone. For a break that's very low down or very high up, then there will not be nearly as many screws on the short end. We need to have at a bare minimum two screws on either end of the fracture in order for the plate to successfully hold uh, onto the bone to keep it from uh, moving. And in most cases we'd like to have more than two, but we don't always have that luxury. Uh, now, as far as what you will see after surgery is simply uh, shaved hair and the skin incision. Everything else is internal, will not be readily apparent except for on the x-rays. Most pets will start using the leg fairly early on. Once the bone is stabilized, it becomes much more comfortable to them. So I think you'll be pleasantly surprised there. There certainly can be some bruising, swelling, uh, some discomfort that will last for the first few days, but in most pets, by the time we're about a week or so out, you'll notice from their attitude, they're wanting to get back to normal activity. Uh, now, it's important to realize that they cannot go back to normal activity. Bone is very predictable in how fast it heals. We require a, typically a two-month period of activity restriction, and even then we gradually go back to activity over another month, so three months of some degree of restriction. For the two months though, it's no running, jumping, playing, no stairs. Uh, in some pets it may require uh, crating or some type of a playpen uh, and uh, outside on a leash to go to the bathroom for dogs and then back inside. For cats, it could be challenging. We don't want them climbing on furniture, jumping on furniture, so a small room with a litter box oftentimes makes the most sense. Uh, depending on where the fracture is, uh, we may or may not use a bandage. If that's the case, if the bandage is on, then you may have to return for frequent bandage changes, uh, usually every one to two weeks, depending on uh, the location, and typically at a month out, the bandage will come off. We'll take x-rays at one month out and at two months out, and by the one month visit, we'd like to see that the implants are stable, nothing has shifted. We may or may not see some early signs of bone healing at that point. By two months out, we certainly do want to see evidence of bone healing, but even then it's not going to be 100%. Um, typically, we don't need to take x-rays beyond two months out because the process of bone healing has already started. 
However, if there is any type of complication or we're not seeing the bone healing as we'd like, then we may very well have to do additional x-rays uh, three months out or perhaps even longer than that. Now, as far as complications go, I went over the mild or minor complications with the bruising swelling. Uh, a major complication typically would be a break of an implant. It's not unusual to see a break of a screw or of the plate itself. Uh, there, this can occur if there is some violent trauma. The pet tries to go up the stairs and falls down, gets out, chases the squirrel, and trips in a hole. So these uh, types of breaks can occur from a sudden trauma. Uh, however, even if you're doing everything that you're supposed to and your pet's being kept restricted, it is uh, still a possibility that implants will break just from the normal weight-bearing use. Now, we're not able to really keep them from using the leg. If there's uh, something about the repair that gives us extra concern, that's one of the reasons that we might use a bandage or even a splint uh, following surgery. But typically, with just normal weight-bearing in a controlled fashion, the risk of an implant breakage should be very low. Uh, there really should not be more than a 5% chance of something uh, such as that. Uh, bone can also break. Um, in some cases, the bone will break at just the end of the plate um, because the, the, there's increased stress from a rigid bone plate to a movable bone. But again, this would be very unlikely if your pet's activity is being kept restricted. Another potential complication is that the implant will cause some irritation or even infection. Uh, if this is something we notice early on, we would certainly have your veterinarian take a culture, treat with the effective antibiotic, and ideally we would leave the implants in place until the bone is healed, and then we just simply remove the implant. While it would mean a second surgery, typically the implant removal is fairly quick, and it certainly does not require the extended aftercare of restrictive activity. Um, if it's a very bad infection or there is clearly loosening of the implants, in rare situations we would have to remove the implants and put some different type of uh, fracture repair to allow the bones to go to complete healing. So uh, to sum up, fracture repair uh, in particular with bone plates, uh, very commonly performed certainly in people but then also in our dog and cat patients and overall the, the success rate is quite high and um, pets go back to normal activity.